Hi everyone, my name is Leah Kopke and I'm a 3D motion design freelancer. I also have a podcast where each week I cover another 3D modeling tool for Cinema 4D. Hi everyone, welcome. I'm really excited because today we're going to finish up 3D modeling our Wacom pen as practice for going over all the settings for the thicken tool within Cinema 4D. We are going to fully texture this pen and render it out. So I'll go over a little bit of the settings for that as well. So if you'd like to, you can render out your project. You can share it with me on Instagram or on LinkedIn. I'd love to see it. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to 3D model with you. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are. This is where we left off. I'm going to go into my layers here and I want to make it so that we could see our reference. We need to add in this button here. So we can't do that with the lathe generator. We want to be able to make this mesh editable so that we can make adjustments and make this whole. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to create a new layer and I'm going to name this layer construction geo for geometry. And once we've done that, what we can do is right click on our lathe pen and we can say current state to object. This will make an editable copy of our lathe pen so that we can use it for additional 3D modeling and using the mesh tools on it because we are limited somewhat with the generator. I'll go ahead and add this generator version of our project to Construction Geo here and then we can actually hide this original by clicking this button here. We can hide it for our renders by clicking this button here, and we can even hide it from our object manager by clicking this button here. Now we're just left with this editable version that we can use. Now we can use ML in order to select a loop around here. I'll go into edge mode in order to do so. I'll hide my material manager for now. Using ML, you can see that that stands for loop path cut. And I go over these other tools in other episodes. So if you're interested in learning all the options for loop path cut or any of the other tools I'm going over here, I'll leave a link to those in the description below. I'll create a loop cut here. I'm trying to line it up with my reference as closely as possible and I'll add a loop cut up here, again lining it up with the top of the button there. Now we need to select some polygons for where this button will actually go. So let's go ahead and select these four here. That looks good to me. And now we need to split this from our mesh and we've gone over the split tool here before. The hot key for it is UP or you can right click on this and select it from this menu as well, split. So I'll select split and we'll get a copy down here. This is our split part. So let's rename this pen button. If I go ahead and hide the original, you can see that this is our new mesh right here is just that part we had selected. If I hide that part, our pen button, and unhide this, you can see that we actually still have this whole mesh here. So if I want to go ahead and delete this from the original mesh, we can still do that by clicking delete. And now we have these completely separate two different bodies for this pen. We'll also need to go ahead and build out this button a little bit more. And this is just 
a base to work off of, but I think it's good to first go ahead and thicken this original mesh we have here in order to give this pen some thickness. So let's go ahead in here and click on this icon here. We'll hold a click and go down to the Thicken Generator and Release so that we add that into our scene. You can also find the Thicken Generator under the Create drop-down menu. Under your generators, you'll see it is listed here. Now that we have this in place, we need to place our pen base within here. And you can see automatically that added some thickness to this. Let's rename our Thicken Generator to Thicken Pen. We'll head over to our Attributes tab over here to see our options. And in our Object Manager for our Thicken Generator, it, within our object tab for our thicken generator, you'll see that we have two different options here, basic and advanced. We're actually going to go through all the settings for the advanced tab, but let's first just start off with some of the basics on how to do this. You can adjust your thickness here. We can make this two millimeters, let's say and see how that looks. I hit the middle mouse button to go out of this view and back into perspective view. Now here we are and let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. You can see this is the hole for where our button will go. We can adjust our thickness here. We can adjust our position. We'll go through what clamp does a little bit later. If you make this negative 100%, it will be extruding from the outside in. You'll be able to see this a little bit better if I go back into the front view using the middle mouse button. If I adjust the position to 100%, it'll be extruding the surface outwards in order to thicken it. If you choose zero, it will be th extruding it equally outwards and inwards in order to thicken the surface. In this situation, we had originally traced this pen on the exterior. So we want the position to be negative 100% so that it's extruding inwards and keeping that original form we had created. Now that we've done that, another setting that I'd like to go over is the subdivision setting here. So let's go ahead back into perspective view. You can see we have this wall in here. If I turn off shell, you can see that it just hid that wall that we had there. That is because it's called our shell. What's right there. And that's what you add subdivisions to when you adjust your subdivisions. If I increase the number of subdivisions, you can see it is adding more subdivisions to that surface there, that's our shell. I'm actually going to leave this at zero. I just want you to know that's an option. You have your shell, which we went over. You also have your start cap, which is actually the surface on the interior. You can see if I turn on the start cap here, that it's that surface and the end cap is actually the exterior. So you can see how that looks when we turn off the end cap. Now you can see that the thicken tool really is adding some thickness to this and it's creating this nice hole here for our button to fit within. So that was our main goal here, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and get started on building our pen button. So I'm going to unhide this here by clicking on these dots. Now we have our surface back. I'm going to go into object mode or model mode rather. And I'll go ahead and need to move our axis up a little bit to work on this. So I'll enable the axis here. 
You can also enable the access using the L hotkey. What this allows you to do is to move the axis to a location that's easier for us to either move scale or rotate from when working on this object. So I'll go ahead and turn that off again or you can use the L hot key instead of clicking that button there. Now I can move this back, the surface back. And I can even go ahead and scale it. I'll scale it in a little bit holding the red handle here. And this is a good start. We're going to need to extrude this and we've gone over the extrude mesh tool and the extrude generator. In this case we're going to use the extrude mesh tool for this. If you're interested in learning either one of those I'll leave links to those tutorials in the description. I'll go ahead and click on polygon mode here and we'll use the hotkey MT for extrude. Now what's really important here is that we need our preserve groups on so that we extrude this as a group instead of individual polygons. We'll also need create caps turned on as well so that when we extrude this we have it completely enclosed from the top and the bottom of the extrusion. Like the actual button. I'll go ahead and click and drag my mouse to begin extruding this outwards. And we just want to go a little bit further out. That is looking nice to me. You can see this is a little bit wide compared to our other button. So let's just use the T hotkey and scale in the shape a little bit. We'll also see it's actually scaled in a little bit the other way. So Let's hold down the scale in the Y direction and scale this in a little bit so that we get this nice shape here matching this area. You can even move it up a little bit if you'd like. You can see the profile of this pen. In this case, I'm using a real world reference for the pen profile here, but you can use an image online if you don't have a pen yourself to use as a reference. If you do, you can go ahead and take a look at that button there and how it's shaped. You'll notice that it has this little groove that's showing here as well. So we're going to need to add another loop to this and we can do that using ML in edge mode. I'll line it up pretty close right there and there's a little bit of a curvature actually to this shape as well so I think I'll add in a loop slightly above and slightly below this as well. Now that we've gone ahead and done that I'm going to select these three loops using UL and I'm going to scale them to make them flat by holding down shift while scaling this down to 0%. So it's completely flat that loop and I'll do that for all three. Just to make them a little bit easier to work with and I might move this one up a little bit. I'll select all three loops using UL and holding down shift. I'll use the middle mouse button to come out of that view and come back into here. I'm going to hide, hide everything else by using viewport solo. And now I can deselect some of these edges I don't need because what I actually wanna do is I wanna pull these three edges back like how they look on the profile here. I'm going to turn off viewport solo so that I can compare this to the edge here and I'll move this back. I may turn off my enable snap in order to make 
this a little bit smoother of a transition. So that's looking good. I can also see that the bottom part sticks out a little bit less than the top part. So I'll go ahead and select these edges here as well. And just move these back a little bit. We're focusing on the main form of the pen first before adding in the details because that it's easiest to make changes to the main form before adding in those details. It's really hard to go back and undo things once you've added in details like bevels and such like that. So we're adding beveling for the absolute last step of this process. I'll go ahead and move these now just a little bit further back. And now that we have the main shape of our button, we can go ahead and start beveling actually. So the hotkey for that is MS and I have a whole other tutorial on just how the bevel tool works. I'll leave a link to that below. I'm going to click and drag my mouse in order to start a bevel here. I I think it'd actually be good to select the entire loop. So I'm going to undo that and use UL and then use MS in order to click and drag to create this. I want to add subdivisions to this bevel. So I'll add in three right here just so that it's nice and smooth. And that looks a little bit more like what I see on the pen button when I look closely at it. This is looking great. We have more details to add in. Let's use UL to now add a bevel here. I'll use MS now to add in a bevel. I'm going to keep the subdivisions at three. I want to look at this from this view here so we can see, does this look similar to the shape of the button here? It does. I'm happy with it. That's good. I'm going back into this top view. It looks like this part is slightly, ever so slightly narrower. So I'm going into point mode. I'm selecting these top points here, clicking the middle mouse button again. You can see this looks slightly narrower than this bottom part. So I'll use the T hotkey in order to scale this in ever so slightly so that we have that similar shape there. Those little details matter. Now I can go back into edge mode and go back into perspective. We need to select these edges here in order to bevel them so that they look rounded like in the image. So I'll use UL. I'll select that loop up there. I'll select this loop down here and I'll deselect these edges that I don't need. Deselect those. Deselect those. Deselect these. Holding down control with the selection brush. Now that I've done that, we can use the hotkey MS again in order to go ahead and bevel these and make them look nice. Here we go, very nice detailed button. We have this really nice looking button here now. Let's go ahead and focus a little bit more on our pen here because we're missing a hole on the top as well. I'll click our lathe pen base here. I'll use ML in order to create a loop around here and I'll go into our polygon mode and I'll use UL in order to select the loop here delete it. Now you'll notice that our thicken tool automatically updated to show that thickness there, which is great. I turned down the clamp to 100%. You can see that when I increased it, the geometry didn't look quite right. We'll cover what the clamp actually does later in this episode. But I just want to finish up the pen first and go through a large portion of this setting while doing so. 
and then go through the little details of the rest of these later. So we have this nice looking pen here. I'll turn off the viewport solo. We need some bevels in here. And we can only add in bevels along this edge here and along these edges here around the button if we go ahead and make this editable. Now, if you don't want to lose where you were earlier while you're at this phase in 3D modeling, what you can do is you can go into your layers and add the original to the construction geo to hide it. But first let's make a copy. So we're going to right click on this, choose current state to object. It made an editable copy right here. We're going to call this bevels because that's where we're at in our th 3D modeling process. Thicken pen bevels. So our pen is thickened. Maybe I'll delete the thicken part of this. And we'll drop our thicken pen original into our construction geo here. So now they're hidden. We have this one to work on now. And we need to make some small adjustments here. Let's go ahead and use UL in edge mode to select this loop here. We're going to need to bevel this, but you'll notice this isn't completely flat. So let's solo this first and see what's going on. We need to make the hole a little bit larger for the pen tip. So I'll select right there. I'll use T to scale this up a little bit bigger. That's looking better. Let's unsolo to see the size in which we need to scale this to. That looks good. Now we can lower this down using E and go into the front view to see what we're doing here. We want this to snap to the edge of this. So we have our enable snap on. I have another episode on the enable snap and we'll snap this to the edge right there. That looks good. I'll come out of that view back into perspective view. I need to use UL to select around here and to select around the hole and I'll use MS in order to bevel both of them at the same time. I have three subdivisions here to smooth out those bevels so they look nice. If you want to do something similar you can. My offset is point Three, six. I might change this to point 0.2. So I'll go ahead and hit undo and then hit apply again. So we get point 0.2 millimeters applied right there. That looks good. Let's go back to the top of our pen here and take a good look at this edge here. UL will allow us to select this loop. We'll use MS again. I want to keep the same settings, so I'll just go ahead and hit New Transformation. It applied the same bevel settings from our first couple bevels to this one. So now it looks good. We have this lovely pen here, but we have a whole lot more settings to go through with the Thicken tool. So I'm going to run through those really quick with some examples. And then after that, we'll go ahead and texture this pen, light it and render it out so that you can add it to your Instagram. And by the way, I'd love to be shown your project. So if you um, go ahead and tag me on Instagram, I'll get to see it. My Instagram handle is Leah Kopke. And I'd love to also see your work, if you're posting it on something like LinkedIn, you can find me on there as well. I'd love to see it. But let's go ahead and jump into some more of these thickened settings before we get too ahead of ourselves and begin texturing this and lighting it. So I have several example shapes here and we're going to go through each one. Let's get started with this top one here. I'll go ahead and click on these and I'll solo it. 
This is our original surface that we are adding the thicken tool to. And you'll see that I actually have resolve intersections and optimize turned on because that's fixing this area here. If I turn these off, you'll see we have intersections here. It doesn't look clean. This isn't something you'd want to 3D print. This isn't something you'd want to use for dynamic simulations. We need to fix up this mesh. It is not looking the way we'd like it to. So what we can do is turn on resolve intersections and it will resolve intersections. You'll come across this more often when you have a beveled surface like what we do here. You can see I added in a bevel deformer. It works very similar to the mesh bevel tool we've gone over in the past. I will cover the bevel deformer in the future though, but I just want to cover that quickly so that you're aware of what I had set up here. When this is being extruded in order to create the thickened surface, Cinema 4D is having trouble with those calculations and it's creating these intersecting surfaces. But you can fix this by hitting this button here and it'll do its absolute best to fix that issue there. Now all these points, it's brought into one place, but they aren't actually welded together until you turn on Optimize. Optimize works very similar to the Optimize tool we've covered in the past. So if we use the U hotkey and O, you'll see Optimize is listed there. I'll leave a link to the tutorial on that tool specifically in the description. So if you're curious about learning more about Optimize, you can do that. But just know for right now, what that's doing is welding all of those points together so that it's a little bit cleaner geometry there. That's what those settings do. Let's move on to our next option here. I'll come out of viewport solo and let's go over our thickness map next. So I'll go ahead and select these both and I will solo this so that it's our main focus. Now you'll see this is another thickened situation, but we actually have a vertex map controlling the thickness in here. So our vertex map is being applied here and it's controlling the thickness. If I turn off the thicken generator, you can see this is basically a cylinder that's open on the top. It's not, it doesn't have a whole lot going on here. What I'll do is show you how to do this from scratch and control this. I'm going to delete this tag right here and I'm going to build a new one to control the thickness. The vertex map was driving what parts of this surface are being thickened and what parts aren't. I'll go ahead and Hit Shift C to open up our commander. Search for the paint tool by typing in paint. So we're looking for the paint tool here. We'll click on that. And when I click on our mesh, you'll all of a sudden see that it's red and it has this yellow dot here. And we've added on a vertex map tab. Now, if I want to go ahead and adjust this so that it's, let's say, 10% thickness of whatever value we enter within our thickness map. We can go ahead and hit apply selected, but first, or apply all. Right now I don't have anything selected, so I'll hit apply all. And it applied that 10% opacity across the entire cylinder. I can also go ahead and paint on here and let's increase this opacity to 100%. Now it's applying 100% opacity to the part that I am painting on. Something else that I can do is drive this with a selection. So I can select polygons in polygon mode and I can use UL. I'll select this one here 
and I'll use UF to select this area down here. Now we can go back into our paint tool and I can hit apply selected. Now it's applied 100% to this area here and we have 10% to this area here. What if we want to smooth this out? Well, we can change this to smooth and we can apply 100% of the smooth to all. So we'll hit apply all a few times. We can even hold down shift and smooth things out here with our brush while holding down shift. Just go around here. So we have this vertex map. We can name our vertex map. We'll name it vertex map new. And we'll go ahead and turn on our thickness map again. You can see it's not being applied yet because we need to drop our new thickness vertex map into here. And now you can see we have 10% thickness on the top and 100% thickness on the bottom. If I turn off the cap, the start cap and the end cap and turn these back on, you can see how this is being applied to our cylinder thickness mesh over here. So that is that setting there. You can drive the thickness of your model not only with vertex maps, you can use actual polygon selections just like this example here, which I will go ahead and solo. You can see that part of this model has the thickness applied to it and part of it doesn't. I'm going to delete this tag here because I want to show you how to do this from the beginning. Now that we've deleted that tag, it's just applying thickness throughout that was a selection tag. We're going to create a new selection tag. So I'll go ahead and turn off the thicken generator for right now. I just have our mesh selected. I'll go into polygon mode and I'll hit the middle mouse button. Go into my brush selection, hit the middle mouse button again in the top view. I'll find the top of our model over here and we're going to hold down shift with visible only turned off so that we can select everything, not just what is visible. We'll select everything in here, holding down shift. And you can see we have that group of polygons selected. If we wanna store the selection so that we can use it to control our thicken generator, we can go within our select drop down menu and choose Store selection, here we go. Let's name this polygon selection new because it's the new one we're creating. Now we can turn back on our thicken generator. It's not being applied yet because we still need to drag and drop our selection into our polygon selection and now it's being applied. You have these other options here, selection handling and map handling. Map handling is for the thickness map. Selection handling is for the polygon selection. You can choose to copy your selection to both the exterior and interior surfaces that are being created when you have the thicken tool being used. So when you use the thicken tool, it's creating two new surfaces and you can choose to apply the selection, like this one here, to those two surfaces, copy that. You can keep it on the original source, which is just this mesh here, or you can move it to the cap, which means moving it to the start and end caps here. So you have those options there for this. I'm just going to choose copy for right now. But 
I just wanted you to know that you have these options here. Our next options are perpendicular boundary and preserve corners. Let's go through what those do. I'll come out of viewport solo. Let's fix up this model here. I'll viewport solo this one now. As our example, this model has some problems happening and we're gonna go over them. We have if we turn down the perpendicular boundary to 10%, you can see that this is not thickening the way we'd like it to. This is the original here. We want things to be even, and we want the walls to be perpendicular to the originals. So let's turn back on our thicken here and talk about how to solve this. We have this option here called perpendicular boundary. If you increase the number of degrees, it will keep this wall perpendicular so that it, it looks nicer. It looks nicer. So we're going to keep that around here so that it looks nice. We also have a problem here where you'll notice that for whatever reason, it looks like this isn't being thickened the same amount through and through. So sometimes when you have angles or corners within your mesh that's being thickened, it can cause some areas to become thicker than others, even though we chose one dimension here. If you want to clamp this down to be the same thickness throughout, you can increase this clamp here. And now you can see that this is the same throughout we can continue to adjust the thickness from here and the clamp in order to control that and keep the walls the same throughout the mesh. We have this other option here, preserve corners. I'll come out of viewport solo once again and let's talk about the shape here and how to fix this. So I'll viewport solo this one now. You'll see that the original is just the shape here it's cut on an angle, so it has this angular shape here. And while it's being thickened, Cinema 4D isn't quite sure how to calculate this shell here. So if we want this to be flat, what we need to do is turn on Preserve Corners, and I'll preserve these corners, thus the name. We'll increase this amount, and you can see that it has flattened that out. This was the before. This is the after, much, much cleaner geometry there. That's how you can go about fixing errors like that. So that's, that's all the settings, including the ones when you go into advanced mode up here. So I, I hope that helps you out. There's this other option, selections that I'd like to go over. It's very similar to what we've covered in the lathe tool or what we've covered in the sweep tool. You can add in selections to here. So you could have a shell selection and I added it there. Your start cap, end cap, you can even have edge selections and point selections. You'll notice that the point tags have point icons the edge tags look like lines, and the polygon tags are filled in and they look like polygons, which makes it easy to see. These are useful for 3D modeling. They're useful for applying textures to your models. So let's go ahead and just add in a standard material. Let's make it a bright green color since we're talking about generators today. And let's apply this to our preserve corners. What if we wanted this preserve corners thicken generator to have the green only apply to the shell? So when we click on this and we look at our selections, next to our shell is PB. Now we can use PB and type that within our selection, within our material tag here. 
and that will drive what this material is being applied to. So that's how you use those selections there. That covers all the settings for the Thicken tool. Let's jump into our Wacom Pen project again and start talking about texturing this. I want to go into my layers here and I want to hide my reference from showing here and in the render. I'd also like to drop in a plane so that we can get some nice shadows on the floor. I'll scale up our plane quite a bit. We don't need to have all these segments here. One is fine for the width and the height. Again, we're just using this for shadows. And if we hit render under the redshift menu, start IPR, everything is black. I mean, it's very flat looking. There's not a whole lot going on in here because we haven't added in any lighting or materials. So we need to go ahead and do that. I'll name this plane floor. The next thing that I need to do is I need to create a texture for the floor. I'll create a redshift standard material here. And I'll change our color to be white. I'll add this white material to the floor. Now we aren't going to actually see too much of this and you'll see why in a moment. I'm just using this for shadows. I'll also add in an area light here. You can add in an area light by clicking that button there and you'll see this large rectangular shape up here. You can move it with ER. You can rotate and T, you can scale. So we can go ahead and move this over here. I'll have this at about a 45 degree angle, maybe a little bit less. Let's see. I'll scale it down, rotate it, and let's let's do the something similar on the other side. I'm holding control and moving this so that we make a copy. I'm going to hide the floor for right now so that I can see the lights a little bit easier. I'll move this on up. You can adjust the strength of the lights here by adjusting the intensity. I might increase the intensity of this light a little bit. And um, we can see a preview by turning on the IPR. I want to go through adding some more textures a little bit before I really get into adjusting the lighting here a lot more thoroughly. I'm going to use the coordinate system to move this back a little bit. This is just a starting point. We'll need to create some more materials. So I'm going to create a standard material. We're going to call this glossy black. If you actually look at this pen, you'll be able to see that some parts are glossy black, some parts are somewhat of a matte black, and some parts are more rubbery and have a different texture. And these are even rougher looking and have rougher looking reflections, maybe a little bit softer. The button is shiny though. So some of these areas like this part of the pen at the tip and this part of the pen at the end, it, they're very glossy though. So we need to make a glossy black material. I'll name this glossy black. I'll double click on this now. In real life, nothing is actually 100% black. It's just not. We see shadows on an object that is black because it's not actually 100% black. So you can have some shadows to make it look darker in some areas. And that helps define the form of the object. It helps it look more realistic. So let's go ahead and make this an off black. We'll add 3% into the value here. 
of our color. We can also adjust our reflection, how rough this is. So we can keep this pretty low because it's shiny. We can even go into our window drop down menu, go into our asset browser, and if you go into your textures, imperfections, you can see options in here. The darker the texture, the shinier it'll be when it's applied in here. So we can add in this really dark speckled texture here because this is supposed to be pretty glossy. So the darker it is, the glossier the texture. And we can drag this link into our roughness and that should help add some imperfections to it so that it looks a little bit more realistic. Like maybe it has some specks of dust on it or something like that. Because nothing in real life is perfect. It's going to have some scratches. It's going to have some dust. It's going to be worn down in some way. Nothing is perfect in real life. So if you want your renders to look realistic, add some imperfections to them. This is very a very simple way to do it. We're not going really in depth into rendering and texturing right now, but this is a good starting point just so that you can render out your project. We're also going to need to create a rougher material here that's black. So let's name this our grip black rough texture. We're going to once again make this black as well but instead of adding in roughness with the reflection here by moving this back and forth, we're going to add roughness again with the texture. So let's choose a lighter texture in here. Let's try this one. So here we go and we'll connect that to our roughness. Now this isn't looking like as rough of a texture as I would like it to. So what I can do is I can add in a new node. I can add in a color correct node and it's a lot like correcting the color inside of Photoshop, the settings in here. Now I can link the texture to the input of our color correct and link our color correct to our roughness. Now I can adjust the gamma or how light and dark this is in order to control how rough our texture is. So if we move this further this way, it becomes darker, thus shinier, or we could move it this way, and you can see our texture becomes lighter, thus more diffused, a softer highlight, a little bit of a rougher texture here. We can also create a standard material that is a rough black plastic. Now this rough black plastic isn't going to be as rough as our grip. So we'll go ahead and make this black, increase the value to 3%, and let's go ahead and Add in this texture again here, since I think it's working well for us. And we can add in another color correct node. I'll drop this on in here. And we can make it a little bit rougher, but we want this to be slightly less rough than our than our grip. So this is looking good. We have our texture set up. Let's get started with some rendering here. So and texturing. 
we'll need to select what we want to apply what to. So we want to apply the glossy black to the pen button since that's glossy. We want to apply the glossy black to this part of the pen as well and the pen tip. So I'll add it to the pen tip. I'll click on our pen here and I'll do a loop selection with UL. I'll select here all the way down to here and I'll use UF fill selection. I have another tutorial on fill selection and I'll hold down shift and I'll click this area so that we have this whole area and I'll drag and drop our glossy black onto here. Now that area will be glossy black. Let's go to this part of the pen and we'll do something similar. We'll use UL to select a loop here and we'll use UL to select a loop here and then we'll use UF for fill selection to select this area here and we'll add in our glossy black. Now we have this grip area that we have left to go. So let's go ahead and make a new selection. UL for here and then we'll use UL to select right here. UF pretty soon but actually we also need to select this interior here. But you'll notice that we forgot to do something very important. We forgot to add bevels in here. So let's go ahead and add some bevels in here. Before going any further, I'm going back into edge mode. I'm selecting this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. MS is the hotkey for the bevel tool. We're going to bevel these out, make them look nice and rounded. Now we need to use UL in order to select this area here that goes around the button and we're going to use MS again in order to bevel that area. Now that's looking nicer. That'll look nicer when we render it. Now we can go back into polygon mode and with that we can select UL again for loop selection and we could select right in here. Now we have our three selections here so we can use UF now to select that whole area, apply our grip to here, our grip texture. Now the last area we have left is in here so let's use UL to select right here holding down shift to add that to our selection. So we have this selected and that selected there. So now we can use UF to select everything in between and add our rough black plastic to it. Now we have three different kinds of plastics applied to this, which is looking good. We need to add glossy black to the pen end. This is fully textured now, which is very exciting. Let's turn on Redshift IPR. This is looking pretty darn sweet, if you ask me. But let's go ahead and continue doing some work on this. I would like to put it on a lighter background, so I'm actually going to add in a dome light and you can adjust the intensity of the dome light here you can make it lighter darker I don't actually want the dome light to be affecting our reflections here so I'm going to go into our details and I'm going to turn off diffuse reflection transmission just all of the settings here we don't need them I'm using this as a background I'm not using this to light our model. The dome light is a lot like what it sounds. It's as if you had a dome around your object and it was lighting the object. I just want to use it 
as a backdrop in a sense. So I'm turning off these settings so it's not really lighting our pen here. This looks good. And I think it's always good practice to name our lights. So we're going to go ahead and name our lights as well. This light is our right light. And this is our left. I'd like to add in a plane so that we get some shadows on the floor. I'll take down the plane segments to one by one. And I'll hit start IPR so that you can see what's going on. I'm going to make this plane quite a bit larger using the T hotkey. We'll really expand this out pretty far. I don't want to be seeing this plane though. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to go to render tags, redshift object, and add in a redshift object tags under the mat tab here, we're going to choose to override this and enable the general options here. We have show background turned on so that we can see the background through the plane. If we want to turn on the shadows, we can enable shadows here and we can even get our shadows in here, but we're no longer seeing the textures on our plane. It's as if it's see-through, except that we can see the shadows cast on it. So it's a really nice way to create a clean background of this pen. We can add in a camera here. Now we have a redshift camera, which is very nice. And you can adjust the coordinates of the camera in here. But first I want to look through it and I look through it by clicking this little box right here. Let's adjust the roll, the camera roll here. We'll make this a little bit more dynamic by rolling the camera. And this is looking interesting. I might actually reduce the camera roll a little bit and also place these under the pen so that we can move them all together. And I want to rotate the pen just a little bit. Something like that maybe. Now what we may want to do from here is zoom in a little bit so we don't have too much negative space. I also can adjust our settings here. If I'd like to adjust the width and the height of this, I can go into our output. I can adjust this to 1080 by 1080 so that we have a square composition now. I'll move this over just a little bit and zoom in. This is looking pretty nice. This highlight feels a little bit intense to me. I'll take down the intensity just a little bit. So that, that's looking better. I may also duplicate this light and move it. And just have a little bit of a large or dif slightly diffused light back here on the right side so we can see more detail. This is looking better to me. And that's the basics on setting up your lighting. I'm going to name this right diffuse 
because it's larger. The larger your light, the more diffused the lighting is, the smaller it is, the more focused it is and the harder the edges are on your highlights and your shadows. It's good to name all of your lights. You can see how much more realistic this button looks when we bevel it. And this is our our render for today and the basics on how to do this. If you wanted to actually render out a frame, you could go into your render settings and you can choose a location to save this to by hitting this folder button here. You can choose your format. I recommend either OpenEXR or PNG. If you'd like to adjust this in Photoshop, you can choose to save it out as a PSD if you'd like. Perhaps I'll do that for right now. Render this out as a PSD. I'll save it out here. I'll click save. And I'm going to name I'll name this, I'll change this to 32-bit. And I'll go ahead and click Render to Picture Viewer. And one more thing to be aware of is that you can adjust your samples while rendering under Redshift, if I change this to Advanced. You'll see you have this automatic sampling. This works fine for rendering. You can adjust the threshold here. This threshold is 0.01, which is good quality. If we increase this, the quality will go down. If I were to render this out again, this time I won't save it. So I'll uncheck this box here, render it out again, and you'll see that the quality is much lower than the first one. You can see this is grainier when we look at it than the first one that has a lower threshold. This is good. This is very grainy. So I wanted to show you that so you're aware of how to adjust your settings. That pretty much wraps up today's tutorial on how to use the Thicken tool to 3D model our pen here. and. If you are interested in learning some more 3D modeling tools, please hit like and subscribe so that you'll be notified when the next one comes out. You, if you want to challenge yourself, you can go ahead and 3D model the base for the pen because you'll notice that this is a simple form that can be created with the lathe tool, which we went over. And this base here, you could make using the Thicken tool and the lathe as well. So I would I would give these a try. We'll go over how to use the clone tool in order to create these pen tips here so that you can add those in as well if you're interested. But you know enough tools in order to create this base here for the pen to sit within. And it's really interesting because it's actually made to have your pen go either way. Um, so it's a nice design and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to help support me creating more videos, you can help support me by buying me a coffee on Ko-fi. I'll leave a link to that below. And thank you so much for watching and taking the time to 3D model with me. I have so much fun doing this and I hope to see you next time here on Ambient 3D animations.